Hello, I'm Shen, it's the 7th of May and you're watching XCA TV. So Samsung sent me their Galaxy Tab 10.1. This is the first edition, not the second. This is only the Wi-Fi edition and it has 16 gigs of NAND storage. So Samsung's new Galaxy Tab 10.1 takes the tablet experience to new heights. It's the thinnest and lightest large screen mobile tablet, yet still boasts fast connectivity, powerful performance, web browsing with flash support, as well as customized user interface to enhance your tablet experience. So the device has a 10.1, 1280 by 800 TFT screen. It has a dual core 1 gigahertz processor. It has a 3 megapixel back camera with a 2 megapixel front facing camera, full HD 1080p playing, and 7000 milliamp hour battery. So, what's inside the box? You'll first have the tablet with a protective screen on it. Let's take that off. So, I think this is one of the defective stocks because. If you look closely, you will see that there is um, pressure inside the screen between the digitizer and the LCD screen. But you don't see it when it's turned on and it doesn't affect any touches or anything. So what else is inside the box? You have your AC to USB adapter with the plug socket um, for your region. So next is the USB cable to Galaxy Tab. Um, and lastly, you have your in-air headphones with earbud placement. So let's take a look at the tablet. It's a very solid build. Um, it's really light. Doesn't feel like it's going to break. It has a metallic finish around the edges. You have your power button here, your volume buttons here. 3 megapixel back camera, LED flash, 3.5mm uh, audio jack. You have stereo speakers here and here. And finally, you have your Galaxy Tab connector here. It's basically the same as the iPod connector, except it's the other way around and they can't be in interchanged. Oh, yes, and the front facing camera is right there. I rooted it and flashed CM9 nightly onto it. So it's actually very smooth. Um, it's one of the smoothest tablets I've ever played with. I really like the screen and it's just a really great device for you to carry around with you. The battery life lasts a very long time. I can use this thing for an entire day and it still only drains about 80% of the battery. So I ordered two accessories off the internet for this. One of them is the Galaxy Tab connector to USB because the tablet itself supports a USB host. That means you can plug in a keyboard via USB, you can plug in a mouse, uh, you can pretty much plug in anything including flash drives and the tablet will Protect it and use it properly. Now the thing I got was this aluminium keyboard which uses Bluetooth. It has a 55 hour work battery life and about 60 days of standby. And it's only £20 here in the UK and about 20 bucks in the US. This will definitely improve productivity if you use it regularly to type things. So let's take a look at how you can root this thing, put a custom recovery on and then flash CM9. So first off, we'll want to head over to XDA Developers and go to Galaxy Tab 10.1 Android Development. Then you'll want to go to how to root the Samsung Galaxy 10.1 topic. There you will be able to download all the files you need to get it rooted. Okay, once you've downloaded it, you'll want to extract all of it to a temporary folder somewhere on your computer. So first off, you'll want to install the drivers for your device. It's relatively simple, it's just an installation shield like any other, so I'm not going to walk you through it. So once the driver is installed, you'll want to open up Odin. Now, you want to power down your tablet into download mode, so all you have to do is so all you have to do is hold down the volume down button, that's the one on the left, and the power button at the same time until your tablet reboots. Once it's done, you'll want to press volume up and that will get you into the download mode. So once you're in download mode, you want to plug in the USB cable and there you go. It, Odin will recognize your device and show it up. Now click on PDA. It will open up a browser. So you'll want to browse to the temporary directory and select the MD5 file. Okay, make sure repartition is not checked, flash lock is not checked, auto reboot is checked, and force reset. 
you will want to make sure that auto partition is not set, flash lock is not set, but auto reboot is set, and also force reset time. Once you're ready to go, you'll want to press start. It will automatically check the integrity of the image and flash it so that you will get a custom recovery. It will automatically reboot your device. And that's it. So if you want to boot into recovery, you'll want to hold down power and the volume down button. This will bring you back into the menu. You'll want to press power down to select recovery, power up to confirm. So now you'll be able to flash any ROM you want from XDA developers or so now you'll be able to flash any of the custom ROMs on XDA developers. You will also have to remember to transfer the files before rebooting into recovery. If you only want root on the current ROM and you don't want to flash any custom ROMs, you'll want to go ahead and flash the zip package that you downloaded and that will give you root permissions on your current ROM. So that's it for this episode of XDA TV. I hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions, you can ask me on Twitter or Google Plus or in the comment section down below. The keyboard accessory should arrive tomorrow, and when it does, I'll do a written review on Google Plus and Twitter, so you can go there and check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.